Welcome mathematicians on today's video on Z scores. So you see on the screen at the moment we have a normal distribution curve with the relevant percentages plus the variation in standard deviation on the X axis. You also have an equation here which says Z equals X take X bar over S of X and that's what we'll be looking at using several examples to reinforce these rules. Before we go any further, I do recommend that you watch my video on normal distributions. It's a good starting point, and what we're about to view will make sense if you do so. So first of all, a z-score, or as it's sometimes described, a standardized score, is a numerical measure of how far an individual score is away from the mean score within a normal distribution. The distribution curve in front of you at the moment hasn't got any particular numbers on the x-axis, so it's lacking a context, but effectively, one of these curves represents the mean in the middle, then we go across one interval, or one standard deviation to the right, then two standard deviations to the right, then three to the right. And likewise, we go one standard deviation below the mean score to the left, two below, and three below. And we can compare scores anywhere along this distribution relative to the mean. And that's what the Z score effectively is. Let's see if we can make some more sense of this with some examples. X bar is the mean score, and X is the individual score anywhere on that curve. So it could be very low score, the mean, or it could be very high score that we're comparing against. An individual score greater than the mean score results in a positive Z score. So any values along this distribution that are greater than the mean score will result in a positive Z score. If the individual score is greater than the mean, then Z is positive. Likewise, if the individual score is less than the mean score, then the result is a negative z-score. So any points to the left of this mean line represents a score less than the mean, and it will result in a negative z-score. So first of all, z-scores are either positive or negative, depending if the individual score is either greater than the mean or less than the mean. Example number one. A VCE maths class sits a test with a mean score of 80 marks and a standard deviation of 5 marks. The distribution is approximately normally distributed. James achieves a score of 90 marks. What is his z-score? So we're trying to solve the z-score in this question. The mean score is 80 marks. The standard deviation is 5 marks. And James's individual score is 90 marks. We have the words normally distributed, so we can use our normal distribution curve to solve this problem. So I filled this in. I put in our mean value of 80, and then I've added 5 for each interval because it's a standard deviation of 5, and I've subtracted 5 from each interval. And I've marked them as a z-score. So we know that plus 1 standard deviation is a z-score of plus 1, plus 2 standard deviation is a z-score of plus 2, and so forth. And subtracting 5 gives me a z-score of minus 1, because it's 1 standard deviation below the mean. Subtracting 10 is minus 2, because it's 2 standard deviations below the mean, and so forth. So I've labelled this up to make this a bit easier. Graphically, it can be seen that James's score of 90 represents two standard deviations above the mean and therefore a z-score of two. Now we don't have to use just a graphical approach because that would take some time. There is a simple equation that can be used. Let's look at that. So here's our equation for z-score. It says the z-score is equal to the individual score take away the mean score divided by the standard deviation. Let's look at this in context. So in this case, James's individual score is 90, take away the mean of 80 divided by the standard deviation of five. This represents James's score being 10 marks above the mean, and 10 marks divided by a standard deviation of 5 represents two complete standard deviations. So that's another way of also calculating James's Z score to be plus 2, meaning it's above the mean by two whole standard deviations. Example number 2. The height of all Year 10 students is approximately normally distributed. The mean height for the year level was 168 centimetres, and the standard deviation was found to be 8 centimetres. Lisa has a height of 144 centimetres. What is her height expressed as a z-score? So the z-score is our question mark. The mean height for the class was 168 centimetres. The standard deviation for the class was 8 centimetres. And Lisa's individual height was 144 centimetres. Again, because this is being described as normally distributed, we can use the normal distribution curve. And I've placed our mean height of 168 in the centimetre and added increments of 8 with the standard deviation. So I go up one standard deviation to 176, 
two standard deviations to 184, three standard deaviations above the mean for 192 centimeters. And likewise to the left, I've gone down one standard deviation for 160, down two to 152, and down three to 144 centimeters. Now graphically, it can be seen that Lisa's height of 144 represents exactly three standard deviations below the mean. Therefore, we have a z-score of minus three. Let's use the equation. The equation states that the z-score is equal to the individual height take away the mean height of the sample divided by the standard deviation. So we have Lisa's height of 144 take away the mean height of the group of 168 divided by eight, the standard deviation. The numerator states that Lisa's height is 24 centimeters below that of the mean. When I divide that by the denominator of eight, I get a z-score of negative three. Example three, the length of a particular type of ant is approximately normally distributed with a mean length of 4.8 millimeters and a standard deviation of 1.2 millimeters. One particular ant has a length of 6.8 millimeters. What is the standardized ant length? That is another way of saying z-score. Express your answer to two decimal places. So first of all, after the z-score or the standardized length of the ant, we know the mean length is 4.8 millimeters. We know the standard deviation is 1.2 millimeters. And we know this particular ant has an individual length of 6.8 millimeters. We have all the information we need. Because this is normally distributed, we have our distribution curve. And we can see here that 6.8 is somewhere between plus one standard deviation and plus two standard deviations. So it's gonna be a z-score of plus one point something, but I'm not really sure. So in this scenario, we can see that the graphical comparison doesn't provide a perfect answer. So yes, we'll use the equation. So here's our equation for the z-score. The z-score is equal to the individual score of 6.8, take away the mean value of 4.8, divided by the standard deviation of 1.2. So that tells me this particular ant is two millimeters greater in length than the mean value. And when we divide it by the standard deviation of 1.2, it shows that the z-score is 1.66666 recurring. Because we've asked to express our answer to two decimal places, that would be rounded to 1.67. Example number four. The length of a particular type of ant is approximately normally distributed with a mean of 4.8 and a standard deviation of 1.2. A standardized ant length of z-score, which is equal to negative 0.5, corresponds to what actual ant length? This one's a little bit different. Here we're given the z-score, or in this case, the standardized ant length of negative 0.5. And we're given the mean ant length of 4.8 millimeters. We're also given the standard deviation of 1.2 millimeters. And in this case, we'd like to know the actual individual ant length, x. Our equation is as follows. And we sub in our values. For the z-score, we've subbed in negative 0.5. For the x, that's what we're trying to find, the individual length of the ant. We'll leave that as the unknown. x bar is the mean, so that goes in as 4.8. And the standard deviation is 1.2. We need to solve for x. Now, everyone doing year 12 further maths has a calculator with a solve function on it. So when you use a solve function, and it looks like that on the TI Inspire CAS calculator, we get an answer of 4.2. X, the individual ant length, or the actual ant length, is 4.2 millimeters. So the standardized ant length in this example, which represents the z-score of negative 0.5, is 4.2 millimeters. Our final example, example number five. A class of students had a biology test and a legal studies test. Each test had a possible maximum score of 100 marks. The table below shows the mean and standard deviation of the marks obtained in these tests. For biology, here's the class mean and the class standard deviation. And for legal studies, here's our class mean and class standard deviation. The class marks in each subject are approximately normally distributed. Sashi obtains a mark of 81 in the biology test. What mark would Sashi need to obtain on the legal studies test to achieve the same standard score for both legal studies and biology. Now when we say to achieve the same standard score, standard score means the same z-score. Let's do this. So first of all, step number one, let's calculate the z-score for Sashi's biology test. So here's the data for biology. So recall, Sashi obtained a mark of 81 on the biology test. So first of all, Sashi's z-score is what we're after. So that's a question mark for her biology class. The mean value for the biology class, the mean score was 54. The standard deviation for the class was 15, and her actual or individual test score was 81. Here's our equation. We sub our values in, and we end up with a z-score of 1.8. We've now got to look at Sashi's actual score 
that would achieve a z-score the same of 1.8, the same as a biology z-score in her legal studies class. To achieve the same standard score, the z-scores for both classes must be the same. The z-score in Sashi's legal class will need to be 1.8. We know the mean value for the legal class is 78. No longer using the biology class data, we're now using the legal studies data. So the mean score was 78. The standard deviation was 5. And we want to know what's her actual individual score she would need to achieve a z-score of 1.8. So here's our equation. Let's sub in our numbers. A z-score of 1.8. X, her actual individual score, we don't know. The mean of the class was 78 for legal studies and the standard deviation was 5. I can put that in my solve function using my TI Inspire CAS calculator. That tells me that Sashi's legal study score would need to be 87 to achieve the same standardized score as she did in biology. So Sashi would require a legal study score of 87 marks. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed and indeed learned something from this video, please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.